British Airways suspended routes to Bahrain and Kuwait and grounded six of its Boeing 787s in 2024. Wizz Air predicts 47 planes will be out of service over 12 months, with a turnaround time for each engine of 300 days. These aren't isolated incidents, but the numbers tell a story of a decade-long crisis that has reshaped the entire Boeing 787 engine market. The Trent 1000 engine entered service in 2011 as one of two engine options for Boeing 787 Dreamliner. For years, airlines operated these engines alongside General Electric's Gen X alternative. In early 2018 of 1,277 orders for the Boeing 787, 681 selected the Gen X at 53.3%, while 420 chose Rolls-Royce at 32.9%. That was before the full extent of the problems became clear. Corrosion-related fatigue, cracking of intermediate pressure turbine blades, was discovered in early 2016, grounding as many as 44 aircraft and costing Rolls-Royce at least £1.3 billion. A decade after these engines were introduced, carriers found fan blades were cracking. Norwegian Air blamed the engine issues for its decision to exit long-haul operations entirely. Virgin Atlantic CEO Shai Weiss called the situation a 10-year crisis. This is a 10-year cycle on 787 issues. It started from the launch of the plane and the choice of the Rolls-Royce engine, the Trent 1000 engine, has not been a good engine, he stated at an airline industry conference in November 2024. The operational impact has been severe across global carriers. Virgin Atlantic postponed its Tel Aviv route launch and delayed its Accra service from May to October 2025. British Airways reduced capacity to Doha, delayed the launch of service to Kuala Lumpur and cut flights between London Gatwick Airport and New York John F. Kennedy International Airport from December 12th through March 25th. Air New Zealand suspended operations to Chicago between March 31st and October 25th owing to the lack of spare Trent engines for its 787s. The market shift has been dramatic. From 2017 until October 31, 2024, Boeing secured 891 orders for the 787 with aircraft engine choices split between 640 Gen X, 96 Trent, 1,155 unspecified. By 2024, Boeing had 948 Boeing 787s on order with just 48 examples listed as having Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 engines, while 534 Dreamliners are on order with the Gen X engine option. This represents approximately 92% of known orders going to GE. Major carriers began switching their engine selections. In 2019, Air New Zealand ordered the General Electric Gen X 1B to power its latest order of 87810s, despite operating Boeing 7879s with the Trent 1000. In early 2020, the Trent 1000's launch operator, ANA, also switched to the Gen X for an incremental order of 787s. At the Farnborough Air Show in July 2024, British Airways announced a significant decision. British Airways selected GE Aerospace's Gen X 1B engine for six incoming Boeing 787s rather than its current engine partner on the widebody Rolls-Royce. BA CEO Sean Doyle explained the airline ran a competition factoring in cost, quality and total cost of maintenance. The technical performance gap has become clear. GE states the Gen X powers two-thirds of 787 Dreamliner aircraft in service. GE Aerospace has boasted that the Gen X offers 1.4% better specific fuel consumption versus the competition for a 3,000 nautical mile mission, along with three times higher time on wing, a 99.98% dispatch rate, and 3% higher annual utilization. Parts shortages have compounded the reliability issues. According to the Aviation Week Network Fleet Discovery Database, 787 customers have selected Gen X engines for 677 aircraft versus Trent 1000s for just 71 in recent orders tracked through mid-2024. Rolls-Royce acknowledged the challenges. We've lost market share on this engine because it's not sufficiently durable, stated Rolls-Royce head of engineering Simon Burr at a company briefing. The company is investing £1 billion in product improvements and has developed a durability enhancement package currently in final certification stages. Rolls-Royce expects this upgrade to more than double engine time on wing. To date, Boeing records it has delivered 1,189 Dreamliner aircraft, 
with 405 powered by Rolls-Royce engines and 784 powered by the Gen X. This means approximately 34% of operational Dreamliners have Rolls-Royce engines. That share will continue declining as more Gen X-powered aircraft enter service and existing operators switch their future orders to GE. For Boeing, the engine crisis creates strategic complications. The manufacturer's reputation relies on delivering reliable, efficient aircraft to airlines. When one engine option consistently underperforms, it affects Boeing's ability to maintain customer confidence and win future orders. The 787 program allows engine interchangeability between GE and Rolls-Royce options, but the overwhelming preference for one manufacturer indicates a fundamental trust issue in the market. The financial burden extends beyond Rolls-Royce. Airlines face increased maintenance costs, lost revenue from grounded aircraft, and passenger compensation for cancelled flights. Virgin Atlantic says maintaining its Boeing 787 fleet requires nearly three times more attention due to its engines compared to other aircraft types. Load factors and fares on important business routes have remained elevated throughout 2024 and into 2025 due to reduced aircraft availability. Emirates has been outspoken about Trent engine durability, particularly in dry and dusty environments. Rolls-Royce responded by redesigning turbine blade coatings to be more resilient in newer engine versions. However, the damage to market confidence appears lasting. Thai Airways ordered 45 Boeing 787-9s in February 2024, all equipped with General Electric's Gen X engines. In 2007, Airbus unveiled the A380, a giant engineered to redefine aviation with room for up to 853 passengers. But just over a decade later, production was dead, and by 2021, the final Super Jumbo rolled off the line. What really destroyed the A380 wasn't another mega jet, but it was the economics reshaped by Boeing's 777X, a far more efficient long-range twin-engine aircraft that made the A380's size a liability instead of an advantage. Airbus A380 entered service with a promise, move more people per flight than any aircraft in history. Airlines like Emirates, Singapore Airlines and Lufthansa placed initial orders. The aircraft required four engines, specialized gate infrastructure and reinforced runways. Operating costs per flight hour exceeded $26,000 according to industry analyses. Fuel burn reached approximately 3,000 gallons per hour. The A380 needed to fill between 400 and 500 seats just to break even on most routes. Boeing's response wasn't to build bigger. The 777X program launched in 2013 with a different strategy. The aircraft features two GE9X engines, the largest and most efficient jet engines ever built. Each engine produces 110,000 pounds of thrust. The 779 variant can seat between 400 and 425 passengers in typical configurations. Its range extends to 7,285 nautical miles. Fuel consumption drops by approximately 10% compared to current 777 models and roughly 12% less than the A380 per seat. The shift in airline strategy became clear by 2015. Emirates, the A380's largest operator with 123 aircraft, began redirecting orders toward the 777X. Qatar Airways CEO Akbar Al Baker stated that the A380 was not an economically viable solution for most of their network. The airline ordered 60 Boeing 777X aircraft. Point to point travel replaced the hub and spoke model that the A380 was designed to serve. Airlines discovered they could fly the same routes more frequently with smaller wide bodies while maintaining profitability. Airport infrastructure presented another challenge for the A380. The aircraft's 80-meter wingspan exceeded standard gate dimensions. Airports invested millions in modifications. Los Angeles International Airport spent $100 million upgrading facilities to handle the Super Jumbo. Heathrow, Frankfurt, and Dubai made similar investments. The Boeing 777X addressed this through engineering innovation. 
Its wingtips fold upward after landing, reducing the span from 71.8 meters to 64.8 meters. This allows the aircraft to use existing gates designed for the 777-300ER without requiring terminal modifications. Production numbers told the story of market preference. Airbus received 251 total orders for the A380 across its entire production run. Boeing secured over 350 orders for the 777X before the aircraft entered service. Airlines including Emirates, Qatar Airways, Lufthansa, Singapore Airlines, Cathay Pacific and ANA placed significant orders. The 777X order book represented clear market direction. Efficiency mattered more than capacity. The A380 struggled with resale value and operational flexibility. Used A380 aircraft became difficult to place in secondary markets. According to Simple Flying, airlines don't want Airbus A380s anymore because the aircraft requires specific route economics that few markets support. High-density routes like Dubai to London or Singapore to Sydney could justify the A380. Most airline networks couldn't. The 777X offered flexibility to serve both high-demand trunk routes and thinner long-haul markets with the same aircraft type. Airbus announced in February 2019 that A380 production would end by 2021. Emirates reduced its final A380 order by 39 aircraft, switching to the Boeing 777X instead. Airbus CEO Tom Enders stated, We have no substantial A380 backlog and hence no basis to sustain production. The company delivered just 251 aircraft over 14 years. Boeing projects deliveries of more than 350 777X aircraft with the 777-9 variant expected to enter service in 2025 and the 777 following later. The pandemic accelerated the A380's retirement. Airlines grounded Super Jumbos first due to high operating costs during reduced demand. According to Yahoo Finance, Boeing's 777X will benefit from Airbus's decision to discontinue the A380 program. Load factors during recovery favored smaller aircraft that could maintain frequency while matching capacity to demand. The 777X positioned itself perfectly for this environment. The final comparison came down to cost per seat mile. The 777X burns approximately 2,400 gallons per hour compared to the A380's 3,000 gallons. With two engines instead of four, maintenance costs drop significantly. Crew training requirements align with existing 777 operations. The 777X delivers nearly comparable passenger capacity with 20 to 30% lower operating costs per flight. Airlines chose profitability over prestige. Boeing's 777X didn't destroy the A380 through direct competition. It destroyed the business model the A380 required to survive. The market moved toward efficiency, flexibility, and point-to-point -point networks. The Super Jumbo era ended not because the A380 failed as an aircraft, but because the 777X succeeded as a business solution. Airbus built the biggest. Boeing built what airlines actually needed.